Thank you very much for joining us today, John. Thank you for having me. So you play a lot in the HFT space. What do you have to say to those people that say that HFT is inherently predatory and only works within good times and then disappears in, in, during the tough times? Sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the way we think about HFT uh, uh, in our space is HFT isn't a strategy. It's a tool. Right? So. Uh, uh, people employ models that have been employed since time immemorial. They just happen to use computers to employ them. So, for example, our primary business is market making. We make a two-sided market. We use technology to do so. That business has been a business since you know the Dutch opened the first exchange in 1609. Nothing different. We just use technology to do it. Uh, our belief is uh, very much there's nothing new under the sun. Every, everything people are doing with HFT, they're probably doing with a phone two or three years ago or, or through some other means. So we don't believe there's anything inherent about the technology that makes it predatory, evil. Um, you know, uh, in the same way that the willful misconduct can occur with phone brokers, is willful misconduct occurring with HFT? Probably, maybe. Um, and regulators and exchanges have spent a lot of time and energy trying to seek it out and prevent it, which is highly appropriate. But again, inherently, HFT is, is just a tool. It's not a strategy. And Case Winburn was talking earlier about, uh, she was saying that HFT only really plays in the top quartile of the market cap shares. If this is true, that means the other 75% aren't actually benefiting from that liquidity. It, yeah. I'm, uh, so I'm two minds. One is I'm not sure that's true anymore. Uh, I started in finance at a company called Island ECN in the United States. It's one of the first electronic platforms. Uh, it was uh, one of the, f uh, I think I saw the very beginning of HFT trading on that platform. This is like 2001, 2002, a long time ago. And the, uh, those firms that were using computers in that market, yes, they were only making market in 10 names for all of US equities in 10 names. Uh, so it started that way, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, for example, our firm, Gecko, we make markets in over 4,000 names in U.S. equities. That's well over half all of the Reg NMS securities. Uh, in Europe, we have a very large footprint. It's not just the 25 most liquid anymore. So, uh, so on one hand, I don't think that's actually true anymore. The, the, the amount of liquidity that high-frequency trading firms, market makers are providing has gone far, far, far more about, uh, about the curve. Uh, for nothing else, just because of competitive pressure, right? Um, we're moving that direction. Yet, at the same time, I do think there is, uh, there is a valid point that says that illiquid securities are underserved by the traditional market. But I, I think that's always been true. Uh, the, you know, people for time immemorial have been complaining about how hard it is to find liquidity and the liquid securities. That's been true. That's been true forever. And, and this is something I would really, uh, I think this, this should be grounds for innovation for exchanges. I think uh, if everything trading under the same model doesn't really work. Really illiquid securities, I think, need a different market structure than the exchanges are currently providing. And I think if uh, there's a lot of room for exchanges to innovate and come up with a better market structure that could better serve those instruments. And what about the, um, the idea that a lot of people have been saying that speeds are getting to such a point with HFT, the, 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 the margins are so small that we might eventually reach a stalemate? The metric reach a stalemate. Well, so the, the speed is just, it's, it's not just, mm, it's not just a, a game of speed. Uh, you, you have to be able to control your risk. The, the way we think about the market is uh, we're making a two-sided market at all times in a number of securities across a number of different platforms. Our, our, the amount of orders that we're placing in the market, our open order risk is exceptionally high. To us, technology is a way to control our risk. Uh, the better our technology is the, and the, the tighter we control our risk, the more liquidity we're willing to provide to the market. So to us, it isn't, isn't just a speed game. Yes, everything has gotten faster and everything's gotten better. Um, and uh, exchanges that have upgraded their technology have seen better liquidity for this very reason. Uh, you know, we're willing to hang out more and more risk uh, as, the, as, the, as the speed gets better. But obviously, that's gonna, that, that, that dies down. At some point, you just, the business model works or the business model doesn't. There, I think uh, historically, there might have been some HAT firms that are purely playing a kind of a speed game arbitrage. That's, that's disappearing. I don't think that's any valid anymore. Um, and we never did that. But you know, you've seen some high frequency firms shut down. They were just, that's all they were doing, right? It's a little speed arbitrage. And 
they had a good run of it for a couple of years and it's gone. Um, I think in order to, to, to be in this space now, you have to have a valid business model. You know, the way to think about it is we provide liquidity to the market, we consider that a service. Uh, that what we charge for that service is some small percentage of the spread. I think that's a that's a valid business model, uh, and we'll, we do it on exchanges that are very fast. We do it on exchanges that are very slow. And we connect to exche 60 exchanges worldwide. We do it on exchanges that have maker maker models, maker taker models. Right? To us, we just adapt. We meet the world where it is. We adapt to whatever's going on in, in the space. Yeah, one of the topics that was also brought up earlier today was that France are going to be putting a tax on HFT orders. First of all, how would you even define in those kind of conditions what constitutes the HFT order as opposed to a non-HFT order that isn't taxed? And do you think there's any way that it could actually be a good idea? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the definition of HFT is, is, is quite difficult. I was just talking to someone in the lobby and they say, well, when I log into my, uh, for my trading account that I just trade some personal shares with, I'm using a computer to execute in the market. Is, 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 that, is that HFT? Is that algorithmic trading? I mean, technically, a computer's doing all the work for me. I'm not, I'm not calling my broker. Um, so defining it, I think, is going to be exceptionally difficult uh, for the regulators to grapple with. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. And uh, placing taxes, any type of tax that you place on a market, it just tends to be passed upstream, right? So, uh, and it might have unintended consequences. So if, if France uh, puts a HFT in, uh, we'll probably make our spreads wider. That will uh, result in uh, uh, making it more expensive for institutions to rebalance their portfolio because they'll be having to cross the spread. They'll get inferior prices. Their returns will be worse. Like it just, it just all, it all goes uphill. Uh, and then there's occasional unintended consequences. I think the stamp tax in the UK is really interesting. Um, the stamp tax, uh, it means that most retail participants in the UK don't actually trade the securities. They trade contract for differences. Uh, also, England is, is slightly interesting in that uh, winnings from gambling are untaxed, right? So, so you, you created this strange incentive that to gamble with a CFD than it is to actually own the security. And I don't, I don't think that's what they intended when they made that tax. So, you know, when regulators think about these things, you can always have unintended consequences for them. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. It's fascinating stuff. And um, I look forward to speaking to you at the, later in the conference. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you.